here today with Jeremy Dean, owner operator of Bodega. And Jeremy, uh, where is this located? We're in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Okay, and the oh, the address is uh, 140 Plymouth Street. Okay, um, Jeremy, how did you first uh, get into cooking? What was this? What you envisioned yourself doing in your youth? <laughs> yeah, I actually started cooking since uh, I was a kid. Uh, I've always been a chef. That's the only job I've ever done. I started cooking in professional kitchens when I was 14 years old. I went to culinary school when I was 19 years old. Did your family have restaurants? Or? No, no. My mom was an amazing cook. Amazing cook, uh, and she loved to cook. Uh, so she went to culinary school to learn more. So that kind of inspired me to do something after I graduated high school. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I, you know, honestly, I think this this is the one thing I love to do. I couldn't think, I couldn't see myself doing anything else. We well, read you're originally from Texas. How did you end up in NYC, and how are you finding New York winters? Yeah, so you know, actually, I don't know where that came from. Uh, I I I, I uh, grew up in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so I don't know where this Texas thing came from, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I love the East Coast, man. I, I've been here, uh, and I've been on the East Coast for about, uh, uh, since I was 20 years old, so, uh, almost 20 years, and I've, and I've been in New York for 12 years. I love it. It's my home now, you know. Are you I a, I, a Brooklynite? Or? Yeah, yeah. I've only actually lived in Brooklyn. Right. Yeah, and I love it. So, uh, this is where I envision myself for the foreseeable future. What do you think about uh, Brooklyn that makes it a unique place? Oh man, it's just a melting pot, you know? Everybody's here from somewhere else, um, and we're all we're all very like-minded, you know? And that I, I love that. Okay, your website says you travel throughout Asia. Yeah. Was well, this part of your culinary learning experience? 100%, yeah. Uh, where else did you travel, and what other traditional cuisines play heavily into your style of cooking? Yeah, so I took a two-year uh, uh, time out uh, from 2000. Uh, 13 to about 15, 16, and I ended up in Asia, uh, traveling around uh, all the Southeast Asian countries, and I made bake off Thailand my home for for about two years. Um, yeah, it's definitely you know that that these types of journeys throughout the world influence my food. You know, I always come back from these uh, jaunts inspired. And I take little bits of what I've eaten and add it to my cuisine. So, just today, I um, put on a special uh, um, crispy tofu Asian sandwich. You know, I'm using the masamon curry sauce that I learned how to make in Thailand for that. So it definitely inspired us. You know what I what I do. And I've I've been to a few other I've, uh, other I've been to many many other countries, but I've actually lived in um, in the Caribbean. I spent about a year out there on a small island, and you know I've, I've been uh, traveling to uh, Latin America this last few years. So Mexico, and uh, I was just recently in Colombia for a few months. So. That's why I also read that you're from uh, uh, El Salvador, Salvador. Yeah, so Mexico. My, yep, my mom is uh, from El Salvador, and my father is Mexican. So I'm 100. percent how did that heritage play a role in your cooking? Yeah, so I mean, like I said, I grew up uh, with an amazing uh, cook for a mom. Like, so we ate such good food, and we didn't. You know, I wasn't. We weren't one of those normal fam with the normal the families in the 80s and the 90s who were having McDonald's that night. You know, we were actually having dinners and we were together. So. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, and that's where I started to learn how to cook. I care. Do you went to schooling for chef? To be yeah, a I went to the Western Culinary Institute. I graduated in 2000. So back before uh, Food Network came out and everything, yeah, it was really cool. It was a great time to go to school. How did you initially get involved with cooking a vegan selection of dishes? Uh, you already said you're a vegan yourself yeah. now. And did cooking for vegans get you to change your diet, or was it the other way around? Yeah, so uh, once I decided to uh, go the vegan route, you know, these are a lot of the things that I missed eating. Um, and being a chef, you know, I was able to recreate these things just without the meat. Uh, so th that was kind of the start of what this is. Uh, you know, I wanted to eat a Philly cheesesteak, but I knew I didn't want to eat the meat. So. I, you know, and I didn't want the cheese, so I made it without it. I figured out how to do it, you know? And yeah, so that, you know, that definitely uh, started this. And my journey started with 
uh, making des the decision not to eat meat anymore. Uh, I, my body just wasn't happy with it, and I don't miss it, and I didn't. So, um, yeah. So you know, and this it, it definitely the vegan started first, and then this came after. Hey Jeremy, what are some adaptations you've had to make as a chef cooking a 100% vegan menu? Yeah, so you, you know, sourcing product. Uh, it's very, very popular right now, vegan, vegan food, vegan cuisine. So keeping these products on the shelves and keep, keeping things uh, with, uh, with using the same product is very tough. Uh, our purveyors that we use, they, they run out of things very fast. So if you don't order right away on Monday and get your stuff, you're out of luck, you know? So it takes a lot to keep up with that. Okay, how do you find it as a vegan going back to traditional family gatherings where I'm guessing meat and cheese play heavily? Yeah, and, you know, um, um, sorry, I didn't no, uh, Yeah, um, it, we uh, do it, we roll with bunches, man, you know? Uh, uh, most of my family know that that's what the way I eat, so they're, they definitely will have something there uh, for me. And you know, if, if, if there's not a lot there for me to eat, then I don't make a big deal out of it, you know? It can stop How somewhere. do your relatives feel about you opening this place? They, lo uh, they love it. They love coming here. They love uh, the fact that they, they know uh, a chef that <laughs> had a write-ups in the eater, and you know, they love it. So it's, it's really cool to have my family out. Hey, do you have family here in New York? Or? Yeah, I got a little bit. Uh, I got a couple of cousins up in Yonkers, so. Okay, now about this place, uh, you started to explain it to us before we started taping. When did it open? How did you choose the present location? How did locals learn about Bodega? And do you have clientele that eat it here regularly? Yeah, so this is where I lived for 12 years. So I knew I wanted to open something here. Um, and given the pandemic, you know, uh, space was available and cheap. So I kind of jumped on that. And you know, for do, to do what I wanted to do doesn't take much space. So the perfect size for for this operation. Yeah. Uh, how did you choose the style of the interior? What feel and look were you going for? Yeah, I love this. I love the inside. This is uh, all of my friends helped me do this. My my friend's wife did the chalk art. My neighbor helped me paint. Uh, my another friend helped me uh, install everything. So this so is like a community effort. It was a That's big community sick. effort, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, we've read Bodega had its beginnings as a pop-up restaurant and vegan festivals, like you basically saying. What are some festivals and locations you were at? How did people react to? Yeah. That? So one of the bigger ones we did was called Vegan Nail. That was on Randall's Island. Uh, we had a line the whole entire day. We went through almost a thousand pounds. I food that never day. heard of this. this is really? The there were twenty-five thousand people there. <laughs> That's yeah. Cool. What was it called again? Vegandale. Yeah, there's 25,000 people that came to that. We had... A, and that's in New York? It was on Randall Island in New York, yeah. Uh, and so that was one of the bigger ones we did. We uh, we followed a few uh, vegan organizers throughout uh, Jersey and Connecticut as well. We did a few... Uh, we did the As Asbury Park pop-up, uh, which was the big one. We, done, we did the one down in Atlantic City. Uh, so we did some pretty uh, large studies. What about this? Yeah. How can uh, our viewers learn more about getting on a list for that? Like, yeah, so vendors uh, just need to uh, stay active in the online, uh, especially on Instagram. And most people, you know, sending a message to an uh, organizer, that's, about, that's what I did. I, I just saw, uh, you know, an advertisement for a festival and typed away and said, hey, I'm a vendor, I wanna, wanted to get involved with this. So uh, most people are very nice and want to help. Okay, I read that, um, this one say first, you created a witty play on words where you had took bodega and made it bodega as a vegan. But then I also read that some people uh, at some of the festivals were saying it's cultural appropriation. Yeah. But if you're Hispanic yourself, like, what did you think of that whole thing when people I, were saying this? You know, I get where they're coming from, but they're making assumptions before they're getting the information. Right. You know, they're automatically assuming I'm not Hispanic. Right. Well, unfortunately for the, you know, I mean, fortunately for me, I am, and you know, I I know about the natives, and I know I've been to I've been to uh, countries where this is on every block. I've seen it. That's how I I was inspired to do it. You know, this is the way. This is the, how I like to eat. This I I want one of these on every corner because you know this is how people should. Uh, 
have had access to food that good food, you know. Uh, and you know, yeah. So there's a few people that try to call me out on that, but you know, I didn't really engage. I mean, you know, it's not worth it's not worth my time. It's not worth my energy to really yeah. uh, start a fight over that stuff. You know. I but, just when I read that, I was like, that's absurd. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. You know. Okay, what are Bodega's hours and days of operation? We're open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. And what are the main courses on your menu? What are the sides, drinks, desserts? Um, are you experimenting on planning to add anything new in the upcoming year? Yeah, so actually uh, we've had the same menu for about two years. We have five five sandwiches on there. We have our chopped cheese, our Philly cheesesteak. We have uh, our uh, Cuban sandwich, uh, a giant sandwich called Max Stack, which is a Philly cheesesteak with mac cheese on top of it. And uh, we usually have some sort of special like a veggie hoagie or something. So that was our mainstay menu for, five, for about two years. Um, we added a bunch of new sides to that, so we got some really I wanted to balance out the heavier sandwiches with lighter sides. So we got things like uh, mixed grains uh, salad. We have a, a jackfruit ceviche, um, a tomato, heirloom tomato salad, so lighter uh, veggie sides. Most people, a lot of people ask for french fries and stuff like that, and I don't do it. On, I don't have it on the menu. It's just, you know, we're working on uh, in a certain uh, style here. Uh, and then, yeah, just do you give people French fries if they. No, something? you know, I compromised and I did some. Uh, I like potato I have. Thing or something. I have a potato side item, which is a. Uh, they're called tibet potato smashies, so they're griddled potatoes, right. and we give them a little smash on the griddle, and then we toss them with fried onions, um, chili lime. Uh, That's right, way better than French fries. Oh yeah, and then our uh, vegan ranch on top of that. So like, way better. <laughs> What's your best seller? Uh, right now, our Cuban sandwich actually. Uh, it used to be the chopped cheese, but. Uh, Cuban sandwich. We sell tons of them every day. What's the most interesting feedback you've received so far about Bodega? Oh man, uh, I think the most interesting feedback is probably that this this sort of food needed uh, needed to happen. It needed to be accessible. People crave this. You know, this is like. And it's a it's a good segue into veganism as well. So if you're if you're curious or you're not sure if you're gonna enjoy vegan food, I get a lot of people that have never tried uh, this, you know, uh, have never had a chopped cheese before ever. So this is an opportunity for them to try one and you know enjoy like New York classic stuff. Right. Speaking of that, you get your bread from Caputo's Bakery yeah. in Carroll Gardens. Why did you choose that iconic bakery, which has been a fixture in South Brooklyn since 1904? And I've I've developed I've worked with uh, the owner James Caputo uh, my entire career in Brooklyn. Uh, I've used him at uh, every restaurant I go to. I use his bread, so it's just a, a big relationship that I established, and I love using his products. So it was it was a no-brainer for me to use him. Okay, um, this one. Did anyone ever ridicule the concept of adapting traditionally unhealthy bodega fare and making it a more healthy plant-based alternative? We read a review in, I'm not going to mention which place, and it was very dismissive. The reviewer wasn't a vegan, clearly, and didn't even know what to say to yeah. us. <laughs> you know, uh, everybody has their opinions, and they're entitled to it. But uh, I'm here to make a certain, uh, uh, for a certain type of person, you know. And luckily for me, that's a large crowd of people who enjoy this type of food. There's uh, definitely the health-conscious vegans that come in and will point out the, this is not healthy, you shouldn't sell this. That's fine. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinions. But, you know, like I said, I have a pretty good customer base and those customers really enjoy the food that I make and you know I'm here for them mostly <laughs> those, are, those are the people I want to make happy so okay, Jeremy, I'm gonna pause for okay and we're back with Jeremy he had to cook up some food and we had to change out the battery or video card so you have two websites uh, bodega.com is it v hyphen odega? That's correct. Okay, and bkchef.com. What does each focus on? Yeah, so bodega is this concept, it's the vegan concept, uh, which we're integrating with online delivery, and we have our menu up there, just general information. BK Chef was a catering company that I had before this. 
uh, and within that, we did we offered just uh, you know men, sample menus, and then also uh, you could book our uh, cooking classes that we I used to do. Uh, so that you know it's still functional, <laughs> just not a lot of requests for catering these days. Okay, and you said that was because of COVID essentially. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. Okay, from your website, say part of the goal for the bodega. Did you get that? That's no, okay. Jeremy. Okay, part of the goal is to mend the broken food system we have blatantly witnessed in 2020 mm -hmm. by omitting the middlemen from our supply chain and directly supplying our stores with the products we use. We bring a sense of locality back to our neighborhoods. Can you expand on this idea? Yeah, so if you, uh, you know, right now we're a bit limited on what we have, but most of these vegetables came from local farms that I went and I picked up. So, you know, during COVID time, as, as soon as it happened and there was a rush of people to the stores, nobody could get the things they needed. Um, and it's because we use such big, uh, big uh, platforms like uh, these supermarkets, you know, they're limited on what they get. And that's where everybody goes to get that stuff, to get the things they need. If there was more, if we, you know, if we had more of a, a European system or a Central American system where, you know, you had your little corner stores and your baker and your thing, you know, you would see a lot less. Uh, That's an interesting point. That I don't think anyone's actually brought that up so far. I mean, we witnessed that going to Whole Food where the stores, the shelves were bare. Yep. And there was basically salt. That's all they had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it, you know, when you rely on one, one giant truck to drop off your stuff, you're, you're bound by that. But if you're spreading it out a bit more, if you got, like I said, if you have a baker where you get bread and a veggie guy and a, a meat guy or whatever, you know, you're less likely to have that, that hiccup in the, in the system. So. Okay, Jeremy, you said you also offer classes. What are these about? And you already said that because of COVID, that slowed down. Yeah, so they, uh, they're a bit limited these days, but uh, I offered a really fun cooking classes either at your house or at my uh, my nice uh, large loft here in Dumbo. And the cooking classes were, uh, were uh, a Thai cooking class, or a uh, pizza making cooking class, or an Italian cooking class. And they were really popular before COVID. Obviously. And are those just vegan or are those like... No, they, we, uh, there was a... Uh, non-vegan options as well so it was for that was run through our catering company so that was more for everybody um, but we did offer also all those classes as a vegan, okay. vegan class as and well. you said before bodega and up until a certain point you did the catering is this still offered for anyone interested yeah yeah you know if we get a phone call for catering I'll, I'll do my best to accommodate but it's you know given the circumstances it's kind of uh, tough to do do the type of catering we were doing before uh, with the, the, the with the uh, constrictions that we had today. So you know we were doing large open table spreads of food. We can't really do that anymore. You know so uh, you know if someone give me a call and they want to some catering, we can figure something out. Okay, what do you think about veganism as humanity's future? Oh man, I mean it's definitely. Uh, the way we're going to have to eat in the future. I mean, I, I, I said this five years ago, 50% of the restaurants you're going to see in the future are going to be vegan or veggie heavy. Uh, you, can't sustain, you can't sustain the system, the, 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 the way we eat. It's just not possible, you know? Uh, and as a chef, I saw the quality of, of meat go down and the price go up. It just wasn't making sense. You know? Interesting too. So you can't, you know, what's going to happen 10 years from now? It's going to get even worse, the quality, and then the price is going to be absorbent. So, right. uh, you know, the, being vegan is being responsible. You know, we're, I, I care about where my food comes from and how it's grown and, you know, what I'm putting in my body. And we have to, we have to look like, we have to look that way. We have to live that way, you know? It, it's, uh, 10 years from now, you're not gonna see the same type of diet that we did with five years ago. You know? It's gonna be veggie, veggie heavy, so. So what do you think might be a turning point in getting more people to consider a plant-based diet? Uh, this type of food. 
you know, 100%. This, these things are a bit more approachable, you know? Uh, I think when people hear the word vegan, they automatically assume it's a processed bird, uh, you know, meat looking burger or something, you know, something that they don't want to put in their body. When in fact, all of these things that I make here are made from plants, you know? I think people have it in their brain already that they hear cheese sauce and uh, they don't understand that it just looks like cheese sauce, but it's made out of potatoes, you know? So this type of food is a bit more friendlier and it kind of gets segues people into eating uh, in a, with a vegan diet, so. I've encountered many people who eat meat, dairy, and eggs who think vegan cuisine is just basically like a block of tofu on a bun. Yeah. Um, how can more people, you know, actually learn what it's about? Yeah, so, you know, social media is a great tool. Looking on Instagram is, I mean, that Parisian Instagram and just looking through all the vegan stuff, it's amazing. You, you, get, you get to see all the awesome things that are available. Um, and then, um, you know, kind of dipping into that that community. So, if, you know, if you know people who are eating that that vegan, uh, or eating a vegan diet, ask them where they're going. Where are they, you know, what types of things are they eating? They'll be, I guarantee you, they'll be surprised at the amount of food options there are uh, these days that are amazing. Uh, I can just, you know, off the top of my head, I think of like. The amazing uh, Mexican food, vegan Mexican food in the in the city, Ja 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 Ja. I love that place. It's it's amazing. You know, you got these amazing burritos, and it, it, it tastes so good. The options are out there. You know, you just kind of have to dive into that world, and it's easy. Social media. Okay. Some people become vegans because of health concerns. Others want to lose weight. Still, others care about animal welfare. Uh, you gave other examples. You know, explaining about sustainability and where you're sourcing your food, you know, responsibly. There are even some people who are raised in traditional vegetarian households and gone the extra step of eliminating all animal products. Some want to eat a lighter diet, more compatible with a yogic lifestyle. What do you see as the latest trending reasons? Just like with your experience dealing with people. Yeah, uh, animal rights, and You know, uh, humane animal uh, farming. Uh, I think one of the biggest issues out there that we heard of lately is the way that uh, animals are raised for consumption. It's not sustainable, you know, the amount of water, the amount of food that you need to feed an animal to get, uh, you know, 10 pounds of protein out of it is, is crazy. Uh, I think that's the most uh, prominent uh, thing out there right now in veganism, so. Uh, okay, and we'll, that's all good. Last question is, what do you say to those who claim that veganism is anti-American and beef and dairy are the true American way? <laughs> I mean, I, I get it and I see why. You know, uh, our, our parents and our grandparents were raised like that. But we live in a time where we have so much more information. You know, we have so much more, the health care we have is way better than it was 50 years ago. Uh, so we know, we, you know, we have the information available. You know what what is it, it's doing to our bodies, and uh, I don't see it as un-American. You know, if I'm eating vegetables that are grown two hours from here, it's not un-American. It's super American. You know, I'm eating things that are local, and that's you know, uh, I, I don't think you can get more American than that. You know, just because you know. Labeling beef and dairy as American is kind of crazy to me. <laughs> it's okay. and, it's uh, like the, the cattle ranchers in Montana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, it kind of has that whole, uh, yeah, uh, rural American feel, but, you know. Where there's, but there's still farmers, though. This came from farmers, too. I'm telling you. I just, you know, an hour into Long Island, they're growing this stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think that that is the picture that I, I see when I hear American. You know, I don't see that as a, you know, I, I know that locally grown farm uh, vegetables is just as good as uh, local beef or you know, whatever they're growing out there. So that's, that, that's the way I see it. Okay, Jeremy, thank you so much for uh, you know, answering the questions and having this interview with us. Yeah. Okay.
guys are covered in uh, vegan butter. Those Cuban sandwiches, so they get all crispy and buttery. Uh, and a little steam. Jeremy, where do people usually go to eat your food? Uh, because it's fast and it's easy. You know, it's it, literally you can order and have your food in your hand in about seven minutes. Uh, and you know, having a limited menu makes the choice you know, pretty easy. You don't have to come so here. So people just go right. There's a park right across the street. People yeah, exactly. The park. Take the food right across the street uh, and you know, eat in the park or take it home or uh, order delivery and get it delivered. But yeah, I mean. And that's a, so that's a Philly cheesesteak. So oh. the max app would be the mac and cheese on top. Yeah, that that thing, doesn't fit. Yeah. And we have our jelly wrap. I've become very good at this, actually. <laughs> I think these uh, local bodegas would be, be part of my sandwich rolls here. For a baker, a vegan baker, but vegan baked goods is, are so popular right now. I couldn't even get a vegan baker to sell me wholesale uh, cakes or uh, pies or cookies. <laughs> so they're just so busy, you know. So uh, I had a customer, and she would come in uh, quite often. She asked if I was hiring, and she wanted to work here really, really bad. Uh, so uh, I asked her if she could bake. And she actually happened to be a culinary student. She was, she's going to the uh, ICE in the city. And so she started baking the cakes and the cookies for me, and they're amazing. Like, she does such a good job at it. What That's, kind of cake is that up there right that's now? That's a carrot cake. And she does a, a vegan gluten-free peanut butter chocolate chip cookies as well. Uh, she does a vegan gluten-free brownie for me. And then she does random things like pies and uh, other little desserts like that. So, um, Fruit in there and pickles and stuff. Yeah, this one's uh, number one seller. <laughs> All right, so we got the two sandwiches, the smash sheet, the potatoes, the mac and cheese. Wooden forks and grease and all paper stuff. No plastic things, you know? Everything's paper. 